whole story. She's an internationally trained professional actress. She has starred in one of the first of East Africa's Netflix series. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we host Melissa Kipladat on the show. Hello and welcome to Globe Traction. My name is Pasil Telewa, and I hope you enjoy Melissa's story. Melissa Kiplagat has captivated audiences both in Kenya and internationally with her remarkable talent and passion for acting. Okay, guys, it's 10 minutes. Let's get it together. Let's make a break. Melissa Kiplagat, an internationally trained professional actress, has made waves in the Kenyan entertainment industry most notably for her lead role as a kisser in one of the first Netflix licensed series in East Africa, Country Queen. We must first acknowledge that this event would not have been possible without the most hardworking and amazing person I've ever met. She, ladies and gentlemen, deserves your applause. Melissa has demonstrated her versatility and commitment to her craft. Melissa's talent extended to the small screen where she has appeared in 10 TV shows, often in leading roles. Notable among them are Country Queen, Ngazi, This Is Life, and News Just In. Her performances have garnered critical acclaim and a growing fan base. She was my baby. It was mine. With her insights set on international horizons, Melissa is ready for her next challenge. Seeking layered and intriguing characters and stories, she makes it to Globe Traction Show with Persil Talewa. Persil, hi. <laughs> Finally here. Yes. Nice meeting you in the so Thank you. You too. I like your shoes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor having you on the show you. and you know you achieved incredible success in the film oh, industry. How does that make you. you feel? Good. It makes me feel good. I feel accomplished. Like the decade that I've been here has been worth it. It's already so, a decade? Imagine. A what? decade. How time flies. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. So it's my 10th year or 11th. Yeah. It's been good. Growing up, is that what you wanted to do? It was something that I knew, kind of, like I kind of knew I wanted to do it, but I'm also like someone who likes structure and plans and climbing the ladder. So I was always like, it's a dream, but let me, let me do well in school and do the traditional route. So I think it was more of a dream rather than a, I'm actually going to do this. Yeah. So I'm most interested, particularly yeah. in our country queen. Yeah. Yeah. That has been like so major for me i don't know if it is the same for you yeah your role sure. akisa yeah how do you find it i loved akisa i i i feel like country king was one of the few projects where i got to do my work as an actor you know like i got to have a lot of input into the kind of person that she was and i had such amazing directors like i love working with directors who actually want actors to play a part in it and have conversations. What do you think? What do I think about this character? So it was, as an actor, it was amazing. It was an amazing time to do the actual work of acting. Did you have to plan for anything prior, you know, for you to get into the acting, you know, that particular role? Of course, there's always pre-production of, of the script and breaking it down. I had a lot of conversations with our directors, especially Mbaya, who was like kind of the main and first director of Country Queen. Um, yeah, a lot of conversations, a lot of breaking down and really having a plan of what I wanted to do with the character. Um, yeah, then you show up to work and you do it. <laughs> tell, me, tell me, how did you feel as a kisser? The challenges, what is the storyline like for that somebody who hasn't had, you know, an opportunity oh. to watch country with? Akisa, what a journey. I, I always say Akisa is just, she's just like every other girl. The things that she deals with, um, issues with her parents, especially with her mom. She has a very complex relationship with her mom. I think most women can relate to that in some way. Um, and then just love and figuring out who she is and where she fits in the world and dealing also with past traumas, which I think a lot of people are dealing with in one way or another. So she's just 
a girl going through life and trying to figure out her place and her people and her family and community, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so tell me about Tilanga. Is yes. that in Kenya? Because I've yes. seen scenes from Nairobi and yes. stuff like that. Where is that? Yeah, Tilanga was shot in Machakos. Wow. So it's, it's in the heat. <laughs> in the heat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it was shot in Machakos, but what well, were, were you to learn any, you know, foreign stuff, perhaps different languages? The languages, yes. Not so much my character. Uh huh. I, I somehow I, I feel like you people unlucky. didn't have faith in me. Yes. They didn't have faith they could do it. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the other actors yeah, like who I are in Silanga, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them had to learn. Um, uh, what is it called? Um, Guy, what's that language? What am I thinking of? Kamba. Kamba. Yes. <laughs> Look at you. Look at me. <laughs> this is why they didn't give me any Kamba lines. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people had to learn uh, Kamba. Yeah. Me, not so much. Yeah, maybe season um, two. Be before you came, you, or rather had all this success yeah. on Netflix, Yeah. tell me about you. Where did you grow up? Where did you go to school to? I understand you've been, you know, yeah. around the developed countries, yes. done some studies. Yeah. But I'd like to hear from you. I grew up predominantly in Kenya, as much as people don't think I did. Yeah. But I've been to the US a couple of times when I was a baby. My parents were ill at law school. And then we came back. And then when I was like 9 to 11, I was in Maryland again in the US. Then we came back. Um, I was in what I was, I was in Songari for like a year and then most of my high school was at Hillcrest and then I went to Brown in the US for my undergrads then I came back started acting and then did my masters in the UK what 2016 2017 that year and then since I've been back yeah so when you came back what got you coming back because you had yeah. the option to stay back in the US yeah yeah hmm. me me I love Kenya <laughs> I love life here I don't, I feel like if I was not to live in Kenya, UK would probably be for me. I love London. I've been going to London since I was small. I love London. You know the way they say US is a melting pot, but UK is like a bowl of Skittles in terms of there's so many cultures, but they're not all melded into each other. Like the Nigerians are still very Nigerian. You but there's know, still like, some bits of Yeah, everyone is still very... Yeah whatever authentic about their where they come from and their cultures and, and then putting everyone together like it's it's i love i love london and i just find it cleaner <laughs> obviously like london is like the cleaner new york sorry new york people <laughs> <laughs> they didn't hear us they okay. didn't hear yeah you still studied film yeah. you still yeah, from studied the masters, creative yeah. arts yeah yeah but you are telling me growing up you knew somehow yeah what really made you know like this is typically what I want to study. This is where I want to be. It's when I went to Brown, because I went to Brown doing to do an economics degree, which I did do. I did finish it. But eh, by the end of like the second year, I was like, I'd rather die than do this, <laughs> than do this professionally. Yeah. Um, which was kind of like a moment of crisis for me, because that was always my plan. Like I was going to go do uni go to an Ivy League, get economics, and then do Wall Street, make a lot of money. That was always my trajectory. So when I realized, like, I can't do that, like, I can't be happy doing that. You mean the economics? Moment of, yeah. Okay. My undergrad right. is in economics. Yeah. The moment of crisis, and then I was just like, okay, well, go back to the only other thing that you've always loved yes. and explore that. And I remember walking into my first class, it was at Brown, it was with an instructor called Larry Marshall. And from the moment I walked into that studio to take my first acting class, I was like, I'm home. Like, I, you just felt it. I just felt it. I'm home. And since then, I've never looked back. So when you tell your mommy or your parents that this is what you love doing, then how was it? How was their response? It was irritating because they were both like, oh, yeah, wonderful. Great. Why didn't you even do this as an undergrad? And I was just like... I didn't know that was an option. Are you serious? I didn't know I could do that. But yeah, both of them were just like, yeah, they were happy. Yeah, go do it. Why not? I wish I'd known that. I might have actually just done a drama for my undergrad, but they were very supportive from the beginning. I'm very grateful in that way. So, You're yeah. lucky. Yeah. I should say that. And um, the Kenyan creative industry, you might, you might have not been around for too long. Yeah. But talking of a decade, yeah. That is a lot of time. It's a long time. You must have gone through experiences. <laughs> yeah. Give me your worst experiences. My worst experiences? Yeah. 
you know it's always there's always two sides because you may have really bad experiences in terms of the productions you're on maybe the standards are not great you're getting horrible food horrible whatever but i've always really loved the casts like i've loved working with the cast i've loved working with the crews i've worked with some really good directors so i don't have horror stories how was it for you getting into the kenyan acting scene and it where was, did you start i started at phoenix I started in theater, which I always tell people that's the best training for an actor, starting yeah. theater. Um, so it was it was nice, I think, because you know the thing with Phoenix, it was kind of like the, the hub of, of a lot of actors and a lot of casting directors used to come and watch plays there. Like yeah. everyone in the industry used to come to Phoenix. So it was such a good opening point. It was a great place to network. My first jobs on screen, I got because of a casting director watching me on a play at, at Phoenix. Wow. So, and it was just a nice community. So I was really lucky. Like, yeah, so I started in Phoenix and it was great. A great and then give me the entire journey. So I started at Phoenix. I was what? What was your first project ever on screen? On screen? Yeah. It was, I think it was an episode of, oh my gosh, what is this show called? It has, it had Liz Nyaga in it. Mm -hmm. Inanna, Mumbi Maina. Woo! I remember because it was a scene with Sarah Hassan and Martin yes. Gidinji. Uh huh. Um, yeah, so I was a therapist. I was their therapist. And that was my very first time on screen. I did a lot of things wrong. <laughs> <laughs> my first time on screen. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I remember I was, I cussed. And the director what was like, did you forget oh. the lines? Did I didn't forget. I, I didn't forget Why the lines, but there was a line I was trying to do that I just kept getting tongue tied doing it. And so, I, like, I remember I cussed, like, I used a cusser, and the director was like, huh? Until today, yeah. everyone from that set, every time they see me, they still remind me. And I'm like, guys, <laughs> it was so many years ago, leave me alone. Then I remember I did a, an uh, episode, I was on an insignia sh show. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm forgetting all the bits of the no, show. No, I thought people don't forget their past. I know, yeah. yeah, but I remember I was on that uh, set. I think it was like my second time. And I just did not know the rules of filming. So like I finished the scene, I finished my last line. And you know the, the way like after you do, do your last line, they let it run for a few seconds to get like all the reactions and stuff. But I didn't know that. So I finished my last line yeah. and the director is not saying cut. So I was like cuts like yeah, cut. and you're becoming the director and so <laughs> everyone's like melissa it's not your job don't say don't say uh, what oh my gosh yeah uh, yeah so it was it was uh, thank you thank you thanks thanks it was a learning experience but how, it was, how, it was nice. it, how was it now transitioning from you know like um stage yeah to screen huh. screen is to be once you know those rules once once you know those little rules about screen screen is so much easier <laughs> it's so much easier like at this point i almost feel like i need to go back to stage to sharpen my skills again yeah because screen is so easy you get it wrong you can do it again you know and you get to like okay let me do it okay let me watch back how did it come across let me do it differently so screen is a lot easier and a lot less rehearsal time so and pays you a lot better so, oh, and yeah. look at you. Yeah, that's why I was like, cheers screen. to free. You <laughs> exactly. Better. Cheers to money. <laughs> oh, cheers to money. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, wow. so it's really good. I love it. I like it. Yeah. We were talking previously. Yeah. Yeah. What besides you being passionate about it and, mm -hmm. and being happy to do it, what else makes you want to do it? Honestly, the passion is a big part of it, especially because I feel like when I don't do it for a long time, because right now I don't know if I've done it for a long time. When was the last time you like, did it? It might be Country Queen. It might be? It might actually be when I did Country Queen. That actually really? might be the last time. I when think, like, did you I guys film now. Country Queen, by the way? We filmed the first episode like January 2019. Mm -hmm. Then the other episodes were the last months of 2021. So there was almost two years of a gap. And well, how long did that whole project take you? The other episodes, episode two to is it six, were four months. Uh -huh. And then the first episode was around half a month. How was the shoot. whole process? Must be quite involved. Did it you have was to relocate? 
When we were shooting in Selanga, yes, we lived at Keno and then we just go because it's too far from Nairobi every day. Um, but it was good. It was good to be on a set of that caliber. They, they really had the budget to do it properly. And you had the best in the industry for everything and not just cast, but the best directors, the best crew. And so it was it was just a, an honor. As like I feel like for any Kenyan yeah. actor to be on a set of that caliber is always just such an honor. So it was it was so nice. It was just nice to be around the best in everything. What well, what were the challenges besides the yoga? heat? The heat. Oh my, my god. Chocolate. Yeah. The heat. Um, but also I just had a kid. So by the time we were shooting, my my little one was four months. Aww. So that was probably my biggest challenge because you're like you're a new mom you're just stressing about the baby all the time yeah when i was in Selanga, you're just pumping every two hours so you don't get a chance had to, rest. to move with her i know when i was in Selanga, i yeah. was like she's too young because it's too dusty oh, or whatever great. There. yeah but i was still like pumping 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 and sending milk home so that was a lot it of was, work it was tiring <laughs> so direct but i like yeah. the way you fit into that a kiss a roll yeah. and you dating a married man tell me about the experience and then I saw I saw the yeah. wife walk in. Yeah. And in how the do you feel you just kissed in the bathroom? <laughs> Whatever you had kissed. I know. Uh, you, oh man. Oh, I, tell me about it. It's interesting. You know, I'm I'm waiting for season two, fingers crossed, because I really want us to explore that relationship between Akisa and Max more yes. to understand how they got to that situation. Um but I think what I enjoyed doing is bringing humanity to that situation. I feel like we obviously as a society are very quick to judge those situations or quick to be like, okay, you're dating a married man, you're an evil human being. Yeah. But a lot of these people, like, there's, there's, there's something genuine about them in that situation. They're not making the right decisions, but they're not mean-spirited, they're not evil people. And I enjoyed bringing humanity to that situation because then I think it opens up a more realistic conversation about those situations because I don't think those situations are always as black and white as people would like them to be so I, I enjoyed that I enjoyed making me and Max not seem like we're just evil people I know. behind the scenes you I know, know what I yeah, mean yeah. like life sometimes can be so complicated and now how do you how do you balance this is wrong but you can also see the humanity of these people you know so that was interesting i i, I liked the that whole drama yeah <laughs> but more, more interesting is yeah do you have to you know like prepare for these scenes the no. kissing and all of that not not really you know the yeah. thing is like yeah. with blessing yeah i'd already done a series with him where he played my fiance so we'd already done so scenes have, like that before. Yes, yeah. So we pay him. It was and, and blessing. I'll, I'll give him the credit. I'll give him is he's he's really good at scenes like that. In terms of he's very respectful. <laughs> it seems like that. Not he's good like that. Good in <laughs> scenes <laughs> like that. <laughs> Not like that. Let me change my word. But not very no. professional. He's fine. He's I very understand what you mean. Ahead. Yeah, he yeah. he he'll make you feel very comfortable. He'll keep asking, "Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. If you do this and this and yeah. this." So with him, it was easy because we'd done those kinds of scenes before. But generally, honestly, if you have a scene partner who's like professional about it, there's nothing to those scenes. I've, I've seen in developed countries, actually, yeah. actors and actresses getting married because they met on set. They did a scene yeah. together. Have you ever been in a situation where you think if this were to happen, then I think it could be this kind of a person? Or have you been in a situation whereby, you know, the professionalism Boy, it, it leaks over table. into, into yes, real life. Uh, yes. <laughs> so let me tell me you, if, if that happens, it's because you're, you're doing it on purpose. It's very possible. Really? It's very possible, especially when you're doing those kinds of scenes, because even if, regardless of the situation, you guys have to build chemistry with each other yeah. off screen. Yeah. So that when you're now shooting those kinds of scenes, it looks believable. And in that building of chemistry, if you don't have your boundaries set up right, or you choose not to have your boundaries set up right, of course these things happen. It's not rare for these things to be happening on sets. Um, so it's a choice. It's a choice. Having been in the to. film industry, would you marry your fellow actor? No. Why? No. <laughs> no. Why? Very clearly no. Tell me why. Um, I've dated someone in the industry before. It's not for me. I feel like our industry, people talk too much. 
much. I feel you, like you people are in each other's business too much. Yeah. Not a talkative part, but people are in each other's business too much. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I don't want that. There's a lot of rumors that are spread. I don't want that. And I feel like our industry is so not stable. I don't, me, I like my stability. And I feel like if my career is not something where money is coming in consistently every month, I don't then know if I could do two it. of us having that kind of constant Lifestyle. instability. Or, yeah, so you know, let me get a nine to five guy, like someone more stable. Cheers to stability. Yes, nine to five cheers. sounds more stable to you. <laughs> yeah, you can have a nine to five and have side, side hustles, but we can't both be up and down, up and down. I don't want that, no, for me. Looking at our industry, it's, it's nice that I heard you love Kenya. Yeah. The more reason why you're not thinking about taking your craft yeah. away from the bar. I mean, I might know. Now people are convincing yeah, me but otherwise. I, but I, but I, I've yeah. been telling you, once you're into creative world, you, that is your life. You can't run away from it. Yeah. And you having done just a decade doesn't mean that's all. A decade is so short. I know. We want you to edge in the industry. You've seen the likes of Raymond. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. And it's like the coolest thing to know that you're doing something that you love. Yeah. However, there must be challenges for you to enjoy doing this thing that you love. How has been the challenges for you? And especially when it comes to, you know, is it the policy formulation or why is the industry just doing so bad, you know? How can we make better? Yeah, I feel like when I compare it to like South Africa, Nigeria, let's say, Kenyans and even Tanzania, Kenyans are not in love with our own content. I think we have such a lot of Western influence, so like we really like watching other things. We prefer, you'll find your household would prefer to watch a Nigerian show rather than a Kenyan one. You know, I do think that's changing. Yeah. I do think more and more people are watching Kenyan content, but that is one of the biggest things. We don't have the numbers. And even if you talk to like the, now the Netflix people, the Showmax people, Kenya just doesn't have the viewership. We don't have the numbers that these other countries have. And because we don't have the numbers, it's also hard to convince people to bring money here. Because I feel like if we had the kind of numbers Nigeria had, South Africa had, Ah, country can be one of ten shows yeah, it should on be Netflix. A you know what I mean? Show. Yeah. But we just don't have the numbers right now. I don't think it's reached um, the rural area so much. But I do think it's changing. I do think it's changing, and it's we're growing. But we need to. There's something because you think of even like Tanzania. Tanzanians listen to Tanzanian music. They That's do. it. They do. We don't, we do. They don't care about other people. They do. You know what I mean? And same thing in Nigeria, same thing with South Africa. But Kenya, we listen to everyone's music from everywhere. Actually, what I yeah. heard a friend of mine say is mm. that Kenya is an open market. Yes. So when yes. you're not so mm. clear about what you want, you might just get lost. Yeah. Within, you know, yeah. Exactly. So maybe we need to just build that Kenyan identity and love for our own which i think is it's growing but um we're not there yet so it's hard to bring money here and then also yeah we're not i find our industry having now done my master's in the uk and kind of experienced a bit the industry there we're not sometimes i find that we're not serious about ourselves as actors or people in the industry because the same actors who are like no we want to get paid well and we should have a union and all of these things they're the same actors who show up to, to set late all the time or to show up not prepared. You know, like you have to do your part in being professional and treating yourself like you're a professional, you're a career person. And then the, they might start treating you like that. But if you're also being very lax about basic things in being professional, you also can't expect people to not now look at you like, wow, you're such a professional, let me pay you as such, you know. So we need to take ourselves more seriously. If you are to change anything about your career, what about my you career? Up to where you are. You're only 32. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are to change anything, perhaps do something different, what would you do? I wish I had taken more chances and explored other things outside of acting. Because like right now, like because I, I, I host on one of the KTN shows, Let's Be Real. And I really love it. And even the training, I really love it. And I wish as I was acting, I'd explored these other creative avenues, whether that's writing, hosting, presenting. 
and all these things because I'm doing it now and I really love it. And I'm like, oh, if I'd done it before, where would I be? Well, yeah. You know. But other than that, I think, yeah, every every journey, for the things you haven't done, you learn great lessons from it. So, and I've been really blessed, honestly. Like, I've been really blessed the projects I've gotten to be a part of and the people I've met. So, I can't complain. People have had it way worse than me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Melissa, for your time. Thank you. Yeah, this I really fun. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. And if you have someone for me, send them Oh, over. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least nine to five, stable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was a girl's talk. I know. <laughs> Many thanks for watching the show and join us again next Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Kenyan time only on KTN News. And if you have a story you'd like to share with us, don't hesitate. Write to us through Globetraction at standardmedia.co.ke or DM us on our social media platforms at Globetraction or at KTN News KE. You can also tap that follow button to me on my social media platforms at Pasil Telewa on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok for more of behind the scenes. But until then, I hope to catch up with you again soon. Same time, same place. Bye-bye, Hannah.